So OTAs <laughs> right around the corner. Let's break down some of the biggest questions, some of CMAC's biggest OTA cues. I like the way that really comes off, CMAC's OTA cues. Uh, your first question, good sir, is? Can Caleb Williams and the Bears challenge the Lions in the NFC North? Um, it's, 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 it's a hot one. It's a hot one. But I kind of think that they can. I think they can. Based on, they gave the Lions some tough games last season. Uh, there was a game, I don't remember, I think it was, it was the second game they played. I don't remember exactly which week it was that came down to one of the last drives uh, of the game. And then, you know, the Bears got the ball back and they did Bearsy things and it didn't quite turn out to where they wanted it to go. Uh, but I look at this Bears team from last year. The defense was really, really good, especially after they they locked in the Montez Sweat trade. They were arguably the best defense in football for the final like nine or ten weeks of the season. Um, and then, you know, Justin Fields was not the most consistent quarterback, but he at least showed, hey, if DJ Moore has someone who's willing to fling the ball down the field, you can make some big plays there down the field. DJ Moore had the best season of his career. And now if you move on to this year, you have Caleb Williams, you have Keenan Allen, you have Ramon Dunes, you have DeAndre Swift. The offensive line is in a better place than it's been in a long time. If I was a Bears fan, I would be looking at this and say, why not us? Why not this year? Why not? Like, why can't we play spoiler to the Lions? I know it'll be tough, but here's where I think that they can get them. I think that Lions defense is very gettable. I think that they have the personnel to actually make life hell for you know that specific defense they've they've you know they've kind of revamped things with carlton davis and terry and arnold and uh ennis rakestraw at cornerback but bears they have already been the best wide receiver trio in the league and if romo dunes is even better than they're projecting to be year one that could be a really formidable group to me it all really comes down to like how ready is caleb williams if he's ready to come in and take this leap and immediately be like a top 15 quarterback I kind of think the Bears can play spoiler when the division. Although I will say, I'm not sure if the Lions are even number one this year because the Packers look really damn good too. Okay, okay. See this. <laughs> look, I, I picked the Bears as my play. Everybody picks the surprise playoff team. Bears. Like at this point, let's make that a drinking game. Nobody's going to be standing up by the end of the day. Everybody's picking them as the surprise playoff team. That being said, there's there's two words on why not the Bears. Matt Eberflus. I just I have a hard time keeping a head coach that's yeah. basically dead man walking when you've rebuilt the entire organization. And whatever you expect from this offense, let me, let's remind everybody, Iberflus was responsible for Luke Getze, right? So like, yeah. why did he get this higher, right? That stuff bothers me. Now, while we're talking about things that bother me, we saw a half a season of absolutely incredible for Jordan Love. We also saw a half a season of glorified dog poop from Jordan Love. And we have forgotten <laughs> about the glorified dog poop all the way through it because of the order of the games. Like, Jordan Love got hot at the end of the year. I really like Jordan Love. I just think maybe, like, we have fallen in love too fast here. All the dating analogies today. I feel like we've gone on two dates with Jordan Love, and now we're trying to put a ring on it, and that scares me. Yeah, but... The back half of the season was so good. It was so. <laughs> it was. I, I. I get what you're saying. And honestly, I, I think even when you go back and watch some of the, the like the good stuff from Jordan Love in the back half of the season, there's like some survivorship bias in there where it's like, hey, maybe you shouldn't have made some of these throws, but boy, still got completed. And man, not many people would attempt that, uh, let alone even be able to make that. So, uh, there, there. I would. I would imagine there's some regression because they jump from like one of the like just a below average offense to the best offense in football over the course of the season i would imagine the truth lies somewhere in the middle but probably a little closer towards being like a top you know top seven offense um i i think this division is gonna be really tough uh yeah i agree with that overall yeah are you counting I, minnesota I, out of it completely you, you don't you're no, out on minnesota. minnesota i'm not like totally out on minnesota because they're one of these teams that it, well, okay, I should say in terms of winning the division, I am out. But like in terms of them playing spoiler, you, you got Justin Jefferson, you got Jordan Addison, you got a damn good coach, you got a good defensive coordinator. Like they're one of those teams that is probably not good, but I don't know if I would be thrilled to play them, you know, twice a season because they do have like the top and out, top end talent uh, to make some noise and, and potentially get you to lose a game that you really need over the course of the season. So this is more really just about the NFC North being really tough. 
Um, but I really do think with the Bears' improvements, why not them as a playoff team? And why not them as the potential NFC North winner or at least challenging for the crown with what they've assembled for this offseason? But well, I, and I probably, do get a little like, away. like Terry and Arnold, uh, you mentioned earlier, is the draft pick. I really coveted him. I wanted I wanted the Raiders to draft him. There's no doubt. I think he he has the chance to be special. I have a hard time rookie corners. I have a hard time being confident in right. So young corners, I think need a second more often than not to me, especially the way the game is played at the uh, at the pro level. So I I like it, but I do think you make a good point. the uh, The way the rules are now, everything skews so much to the offense. I think the Bears have the chance to have a great, one of the best offenses in the league, right? So when that happens, and I think that will happen, I think you're right. They're going to put up, this is not going to be the Bears we're used to. Like, they're not going to be yeah. sitting here winning ugly football games. They're going to be putting up, you know, up upper 20 points a game and just really pressuring people to try and match that play for play. I I, I do think that the Bears have a chance to be very good. I don't, I don't share your passion, but I will say this. Like, I also don't share your passion for the Packers. I'm settling in on Lions 1, Bears two, Packers three, Vikings four. How do you like that? Ooh, that's t- that's a that's tough. I'll I'll throw in an extra prediction on your prediction. All teams win at least eight games. Oh, oh that is a staunch division. 